Lay your hands upon us. Help us to fight a good warfare. Lay your hands upon our destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. For the next few minutes, beloved, just want to look at a few scriptures, pass some comments on them. Then we pray again as the Spirit of God directs us. Thereafter, we go straight away into the anointing service. Let me congratulate all those who managed to get here tonight. There is a word of prophecy concerning all those presented at this meeting. God said his glory shall be upon everyone who comes. I congratulate you. For the next few minutes, I want to look at a topic that I call wickedness must die. Wickedness must die. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians 6, 12 says this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. That is what the scripture has said. But then let's look at the days in which we live in. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation 12, 12. The Bible says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. We are in a desperately wicked period in man's history. And part of the sign of the last days is what you find in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. It says this, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Beloved, there are many wicked things going on in our world. A lot of wicked activities are going on now. And if we as Christians, as children of the kingdom, don't know how to address these things, we shall become victims. What is wickedness? Wickedness is anything evil. Wickedness is to be morally very bad. Wickedness is to be evil in principles and actions. Wickedness is to always engage in mischief without regard for consequences. Wickedness is to commit atrocities, to be fierce, malicious, dangerous, hazardous, uncivilized. That's what is known as wickedness. Wickedness is to be disgustingly unpleasant. Wickedness is to cause harm or distress or trouble. The Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. Whether we like it or not, we are living in the last days. And the Bible makes us to understand some of the signs of those last days. It says there shall be wars and rumors of war is already happening. It says there shall be false prophets. There are many of those ones. The Bible talks about fear, distresses and calamity. There is already a lot of that one. The Bible talks about increase in knowledge you can see that knowledge of man is really increasing. The Bible says there shall be lawlessness, violence, and corruption. It's already happening. But one neglected sign of the last day is that there shall be a satanic revival. That is, in the realm of the spirit, there shall be extreme wickedness. Because the devil will be making his final attack on the human race. And it will be a desperate final attack. It is a wicked attack. The Bible says, Woe unto the earth and unto the sea. So for the devil has come down to you with great thoughts, knowing that the earth but a short time. Why don't you turn to that fellow next to you? Say, the short time of the devil will not prosper in my life. Can you shout it at that person? Turn to another person and say the same thing. 
turned to a third person and said the same thing. Beloved, wicked powers have now increased their activities. All you need to do is to get a copy of the newspapers and you see what we mean by increase in wickedness. People pour acid on each other. Somebody will have a dream. Someone bites the person in the dream. The next morning, they say breast cancer has started. People capture, kill each other in order to make money. Some people will empty the internal organs of a small baby and fill it with drugs because they want money. People will donate their own children because of money. People are sending serpents and all kinds of arrows to each other. Insanity is now on the increase. Many people are being locked up by powers of darkness. Many people who believe they have friends now know that they have none. And many are crying day and night. Why is my life like this? When will things be okay for me? Why are they attacking me? What have I done wrong? Am I the only person in this world? Why is it that nothing is working? Who have I offended? Why is it that some wicked powers are refusing to let me go? You will waste your time harassing yourself with those questions. If you give somebody a dirty slap, and the person slaps you back, the person is not wicked. Wickedness is when you have done nothing wrong, and somebody is attacking you. This is why the Bible has very harsh words. Very, very harsh words against the wicked. Let's look at some of them. Just some of them before we, before we start praying now. In Job chapter 8, verse 22. Job chapter 8, verse 22. It says this. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame. And the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. I didn't write those words. They are there in scripture. Look at this book, Job chapter 18, verse 5. Job 18, 5. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. I didn't write that one. It's there in the Bible. In Psalm number 7, verse 11. Psalm 7, verse 11. Ask this to say, God judged the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. Look at Psalm 11, verse 6. Upon the wicked it shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone. And an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. You find that in the Bible. I didn't write that one. In Psalm number 37, verse 20. Psalm 37, verse 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, into smoke shall they consume away. So you can see those harsh words of scripture. I can tell you a lot more, but for lack of time. Look at Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 22. So, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. The Bible says they shall be cut off. In the same Proverbs chapter 10, Verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. This is why I know that any unrepentant wickedness that has followed anyone here tonight, if they don't release you, they shall die. Look at the same thing in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. And then the last but not the least that I want to read to you in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 11. Isaiah 3, verse 11. 
This is the word of God. Woe unto the wicked. Have you found that place in your Bible? Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. It shall be ill with him. That's what the Bible says. Today, I pray that any wickedness targeted against you must die. Sometimes some of the prayers we pray here are not clear to many people. The mountain of fire and miracles ministry does not pray against human beings. We battle with evil power. When we command a particular power to die, we are decreeing that that power should stop its evil activity. Even in normal English language, death has so many meanings. Death does not mean to stop living alone. If something expires, we can say it's dead. If something has stopped working, we can say it's dead. If something disappears, you can say it's dead. When you eradicate something, you can say it's dead. That's why somebody can say cultism is dead in this university. So to die is, does not sometimes mean to stop breathing. God looked at Adam and told Adam, in the day you eat of this fruit, you shall die. Adam ate it and still lived for 930 years more. So the death God was talking about was not that Adam should fall down and stop breathing. The Bible says it that giveth himself to pleasure is dead while she liveth. Spirits, of course, do not die. But it's possible to stop a spirit from carrying out its evil function. To confront wickedness, there are some principles you must understand. The first principle is that there must not be any wickedness in you. For you to confront an external witch and defeat that external witch, the witch in you will have to die first. If there is any wickedness in you, confess it today and drop it. Second principle you should understand is this. Wickedness begins from hellfire. It enters into the heart. From the heart it enters into the imagination. The imagination, it becomes the thought. It becomes action. So if you stop wickedness at the level of your heart, it doesn't go further. The third principle you should understand is this. Wickedness does not need to have any motive. Don't keep shouting, I haven't done anything wrong. You don't have to do anything wrong. Yes. Wickedness need not have any motive. The fourth principle you should understand is this. There is a serpent and scorpion power behind all wickedness. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scop over every power of the enemy. Another principle you must understand is that there is a class of spirits that specializes in wickedness. What you read in Ephesians 6.12, we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, their wickedness in heavenly parts. The sixth principle you must understand is that we Wickedness is alien to mercy and pity. They are not interested in your trying to pacify them. The only language you understand is violence. The seventh principle you need to know about wickedness. That the Bible says there are different levels of wickedness. When an unclean spirit leaves a man, it does not go far. But it goes to some distance and goes back to where it came out from. When he finds it cleaned up and nothing to replace him, the Bible says he goes to bring several more wicked spirits. Somebody who stole your bed is a very wicked person. But the person who stole your sleep is a more wicked person. Somebody who stole your book is a wicked person. But the person who stole your brain is a more wicked person. There is what you call environmental wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. Marital wickedness. Physical wickedness, household wickedness, career wickedness. And the last point that I want you to understand is this. There is no gentle way of addressing wickedness. There is no gentle way of calming down wickedness. Let us see our Lord Jesus Christ in action. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. Jesus wanted to deal with some terrible spirits. Listen to what this spirit said. Matthew 8, 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, 
What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? And thou come either to torment us before the time. So the wicked know their fate. They just want to destroy as many people as possible before they go. Therefore, prepare for war tonight. So, number one, there must be no wickedness in you. Number two, you can rebook the operation of the wicked today. Number three, you can bind the strong man of the wicked today. Number four, you can pull down the stronghold of the wicked today. Number five, you can reverse any curse to become blessings today. You can reject all the bad names you have been given. You can follow the principle of the psalmist. It says, when, my, when the wicked and my foes come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumble and they fall. We are here tonight to address these things. Personal wickedness, environmental wickedness, national wickedness, international wickedness, environmental wickedness, spiritual wickedness. We need to face them in every area and command their powers to be destroyed. Fortunately, we have the backing of scripture. Say, woe unto the wicked. Say, say ye unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. Tonight, prepare yourself. Let's rise up on our feet. Everybody rise up on your feet, please. And get yourself ready for the new things that the Lord will start doing now. The next few minutes from now. Balaam was very wicked. God dealt with him. Goliath was wicked. God dealt with him. All those who pushed Daniel into the lion's den, God dealt with them. The wicked Herod, God dealt with him. So every wickedness that has followed anyone here, God is set to deal with them tonight. But listen to this. If you are in this gathering tonight, and you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, do so very, very quickly now, so that you can be part of the blessings the Lord will soon begin to shower over this place. So in case you are here tonight, and you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, say, man of God, I want to do so tonight. I want wickedness to die in my life. I want to be a candidate for heaven. Right there where you are, while all eyes are closed. Just raise up your right hand. God bless you. Raise it up very well. God bless you. God bless you. Just a few raising up your right hand. Such a loud hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet now. For the next few minutes, we want to deal with forces of wickedness in all their ramifications. This is a dangerous time to sit down or to sleep. Find anyone sitting down or sleeping, tell them to rise up. This is a dangerous time to sleep. Dangerous time not to be alert. This prayer, I want you to pray three hot times. Three hot times. As you are praying it and hammering on it, the forces of heaven will move on your behalf and pull down every pharaoh that is pursuing your Moses. Sisters, can you say this after me? Every arrow of wickedness. Can I hear the sister saying that loud and clear? Targeted against my destiny. Let the sister say it loud and clear again. I'm sure the sisters can say it louder than that. Yes. Brother, say it loud and clear. Everybody together now. Jesus, deal with the arrow of wickedness. In the name of Jesus. Deal with the arrow of wickedness. Command the arrow of wickedness to die. To die, to die. Bosete kaya boshendera bokora basanta. In Jesus' name we pray. That's number one. See what is happening already. Hey, 
Amen. Ten things have just happened. Somebody who has been having constant fever has just been delivered. There is one person here. You have a bad heart. Because of that, you can't do any hard exercise. But the Lord has given you a new heart now. You can jump, you can run, you can do everything you're not able to do before now. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is being ravaged by tuberculosis. The power of God has just delivered you. I see the Lord healing somebody from a blood disease. Another person is being healed from a kidney trouble. Another person from a bladder trouble. Another person is being healed from deafness in one ear. Another person is being healed from affliction in the backside. Affliction. There is an evil swelling in somebody's womb over there. The power of God has just punctured that evil swelling. Somebody is being healed from arthritis. And there is somebody here. You broke your hip before. And you've been having problems there. You can hear a cracking sound there now. The Lord is resetting the bones. Every arrow of wickedness targeted against me. In the name of Jesus. Yes, deal with the arrow of wickedness. Deal with the arrow of wickedness. Deal with it. Deal with it. Mopa da seteka. Ribokopo le shete ya boko sente ya ba. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus name we pray thou power of goiter thou power of cataract thou power of blindness vanish now in the name of Jesus as we pray this next prayer point if you are in this meeting tonight and at a stage in your life somebody took you to the cemetery and right in that cemetery they began to commit morality with you there. Please find a way to the altar so that the Lord can release you tonight from this arrow of wickedness. Sex in the cemetery. Find a way very quickly to the altar here because the power of God is going to deliver you now. Every Goliath of impossibility. Can you shout it loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Masikate abo shende abo kora baraba. Yes. Let the power of God release you unto your breakthroughs today. In the name of Jesus. Masikate abo shende abo kora baraba. Spirit of the living God. Move. 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 Masete kaya boshente raba. Kill the Goliath of impossibility. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, there are 12 persons here tonight. Within the next two weeks, the kind of breakthrough that is going to bombard your life will make all your past poverty to be forgotten all your past poverty shall be forgotten I congratulate you
If someone near you have not you have not been sleeping, the enemy has stolen your sleep away from you. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of that sleeplessness is broken. There's a person over there. <laughs> now say this one louder than the person close to you. Wherever the enemy has knocked me down. My father, raise me up in the name of Jesus. Wherever the enemy has knocked me down, my father, raise me up, 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 raise me up. Mosete kaya bo shende rebo kapia, rebo kapo le sete ya bo shente aba. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at the front here, let your amen be dynamic. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release this your children unto your holy hand. Every bondage to the grave, I command them to be broken. Right there where you are tonight, receive your deliverance. 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 Every arrow that has been fired into your life from the graveyard, receive deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Now shake your head. Shake your head vigorously. Shake it vigorously. That's right. Shake it vigorously. Yes, the arrow of the oppressor is coming out. Through the mouth. Through the nose. Through the womb. Shake it vigorously. Yet tonight is that night. You must be completely delivered. Lord, let your power be released upon these your children. And lay your mighty power upon them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. The Lord has given you a great deliverance tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are, beloved. If you have any sickness on your body, this is the time to lay your hands upon it. Make sure you are standing on your feet. You will now say this prayer loud and clear. As you are praying this prayer, every garment of infirmity shall be broken to pieces. Every honor of the Lord of infirmity. Carry your Lord by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let the owners of infirmity carry their loads. They must carry their loads. They must carry their loads. Yes, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Masopokaya Boshendera Bokoseta. Command them to carry their loss of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I stand against every infirmity. The one in the head, the one in the eyes. The one in the chest, the one in the womb, the one in the stomach, the one in the backbone, the one in the reproductive organ. Any infirmity in any part of the body. Hear the word of the living God. Lose your hole in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord begin to check your body now those things you were not able to do before put your faith into action and begin to do so now i give you time that's right check that swelling in your body it has disappeared check that goiter it has disappeared Try that ear it can hear very well now check that eye the cloudiness in the eye has disappeared 
Yes, that's the power of God. It's moving from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Check that swelling in the body. It has just vanished. Check that hand that was not working. The hand is not moving. The leg is not moving. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Check your body. That's right. That's right. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Jesus. If you check your body now, and you know you have been healed, find a way to the front there so that I will pray for you and put a seal on your miracle. If you check your body, you see that the healing hand of God has touched you. A condition you brought here has disappeared, it's no longer in your body. Find a way to the front. Find a way to the front very quickly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at so many people that the Lord has healed. God is touching somebody over there. Something that has held tight to your neck. And you cannot turn it very well. It's been shifted away. Turn that head. Turn that head. The yoke is broken already. That's right. Something has been tying the stomach of this sister. And you have this feeling that somebody is trying to squeeze you together. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And that yoke is broken. Oh, God has healed so many people, so many people. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you at the front, begin to say, It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Permanent. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. It shall be permanent. Oh, yes. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent. Lord, I cover this, your children, with the blood of Jesus. Let the seal of the power of God be upon your life. And I decree that your miracle shall be permanent. No power shall steal it from you. And the Lord will use this one as a stepping stone to greater things for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Please let's rise up on our feet now. Everybody let's rise up on our feet. Especially if you love Nigeria. Let's rise up on our feet. For the next few minutes, before we go into the anointing service proper, I'd like us to pray some prayers for our country. All eyes closed. Say this after me, beloved. Let the power of salvation come upon Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray like that. Let the power of salvation come upon Nigeria. In Jesus' name we pray. Let this nation experience the awesome power of God in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Let our nation experience the awesome power of the living God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Every agent of the devil in this country be arrested by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray like that. Every agent of the devil in this country be arrested by fire. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Oh God, arise and give Nigeria God fearing leaders. In the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray like that. God fearing leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let us begin to decree a peaceful and successful election. At any enemy that wants to use that process to drink blood should be disgraced completely. Let's decree a peaceful and successful election. To the glory of the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray for peace, unity, and stability. And let us pray for economic growth, prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.